Hey there everyone, thank you so much for being here and thank you so much for watching. This video is the last of a four video series I'm doing in collaboration with Synology and ASUS. For full disclosure, both ASUS and Synology have sent equipment for this series, but none of them get to approve or reject content before it's uploaded, they don't get to edit that, and all the opinions you're hearing are my own. In this video, I'm going to talk about how 10 gig networking and the 10 gig networking NES can completely transform how small businesses, medium businesses, even home labbers out there operate. It includes not only the file transfers, which are completely faster on over 10 gig, that's basic stuff, you don't need me for that. We are going to talk about how it enables you in regards to business continuity, productivity, disaster recovery. We are even going to touch on the infrastructure level and see how it enables you to do virtualization. For example, iSCSI and NFS, where you get none of the bottlenecks of one gig networking and all the benefits of running uh, virtual machines off your NAS for backing up, for replication, for snapshotting, etc, etc. So let's dive right in and see what I'm talking about. Join me. All right, guys, so we are at the computer. And again, I want to make it as clear as possible. This video is not going to be about showing you how file transfers are so much faster over 10 gig uh, compared to one gig. That's obvious, you don't need me for that. I want to talk about what 10 gig networking can mean to you, what it brings to you. And of course, we're going to see some uh, demo of uh, uh, synchronization of a large file using Synology Drive, just so we'll have a grasp of what we're talking about, but we'll talk about what it means to you. Now, a lot of people sometimes refer to Synology, Synology Drive as a Dropbox or OneDrive equivalent. In some terms, it is. In many ways, it isn't. Uh, just for illustration purposes, if you're using Dropbox and you need to sync files from one computer to another to a coworker sitting next to you, whatever the file uh, size is, it has to go through the internet to Dropbox and then be downloaded from the internet to your coworker computer. Now, even if you have 10 gig network, your internet is probably not 10 gig and this will take a long time. The larger the file, the longer it will take. If you're using Synology Drive and you're in the office and your coworker, his coworker is sitting right next to you, you sync a large file and the synchronization is local. The file is synced over 10 gig to the NAS and then downloaded over 10 gig to the coworker next to you. And this is exactly what it can mean to you. The, the, I had a lot of uh, times where I had to, say, to tell to a client or a coworker, I, I uploaded the file for you, I, I finished my part on it. Now it's a 500 gigabyte file, so you will probably be able to work on it after lunch or, or tomorrow. That's exactly the meaning of 10 gig networks. There's no more after lunch, no more tomorrow. You can start working and co-working on large files, sync them in a matter of minutes, if not seconds, and that's exactly the meaning of a 10 gig network. Now, just for demonstration purposes, I'm going to take a 10 gig, a 10 gig file and I'm going to sync it to my Synology Drive synced folder. Now, every, every file you upload to Synology Drive, the larger the file, the longer it will take time, it's called overhead. The amount of time the system is preparing to sync your file. At this time, the file is not yet on the move. The system is preparing to digest it. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy the file to my synced folder. All right, so the file is starting to be synced to Synology Drive. Of course, I'm going to speed this process up but let's maybe even take a stopwatch or something because I don't want to waste a precious time. And I'll stop the stopwatch when the sync is over. And that's it, the sync is done. It took about 30 seconds. I actually talked a little, uh, a little bit before I started the stopwatch, but that's the meaning of 10 gig networking. It's exactly this, working on gigabytes large files in a matter of seconds or minutes 
instead of hours or days. That's exactly the meaning of a 10 gig network. Now let's take it to another applicative benefit you can gain from a 10 gig network. As you know, Synology has a lot of backing up features and applications. For example, active backup for business. It's something that I have talked about in a video. So I'm going to put a link to it in the top right corner. Of course, backing up a computer, backing up data over 10 gig compared to one gig is a lot faster. And of course, incremental backups over 10 gig in compared to one gig are a lot faster. But that's not really the meaning of 10 gig network. Think about the meaning when you need to restore data. If you lost a computer, if you lost a bunch of data, and now you need to restore a, a, a large amount of a, a large amount of, I don't know, gigabytes or even in many terabytes of data, that's where the meaning of 10 gig network takes place because instead of, I know, losing a complete business day, you will now be able to save according to the amount of data you need to restore. You might be able to save, I know, 50% of your business day because you will restore a lot faster. But more importantly, you will save 100% of your reputation because your clients are not going to hear an answer from you that we are uh, offline right now because of some technical difficulty. I will talk to you tomorrow. There's no more tomorrow. You will, you will get back to the client in a few hours time. That's completely reasonable. That's the meaning of 10 gig network. Now we have just talked about the application layer of stuff and we are now going to take it to the infrastructure level of stuff. And I'm talking specifically about virtualization that a lot of businesses and home labors are utilizing. So let me fire up my lab ESXi server and let's start seeing how 10 gig networks brings meaning into that layer. All right, guys. So we saw how beneficial it can be for you to have a 10 gig network and a 10 gig capable NES on the application level of things. I am more of an infra infrastructure kind of guy, so this portion of the video interests me a lot more. Or uh, let's say most of small businesses and medium, medium businesses and home labs usually run virtual machines directly from hard drives inside their virtualization server, inside their ESX server. In this example, I'm using ESXi and the uh, vCenter. But there's a risk in that. The performance can be great, especially if you're talking about SSDs. But if the hard disk, the physical hard disk in the ESXi server decides to die, it will take all the virtual machines stored on it with it to the grave. But now you can configure these uh, uh, remote or let's say network uh, data stores and you get two main benefits out of it. One, you will not suffer the bottleneck of one gig networks. The performance will be extra great. In fact, I am going to do a little contest later on, so keep watching. And you will get all the benefits of having your uh, virtual machine on your NAS in regards to backing up, snapshot, replication. I will, uh, of course, show you everything uh, later on. Let's jump over to my ESXi server. I just want to show you that there are two uh, data stores. One is uh, iSCSI and one is NFS. Every protocol has its own advantages and disadvantages, but overall there are uh, uh, data stores that actually live on my 10 gig uh, capable uh, NAS. I've also added to the CSXI server a 10 gig capable network card. Here is the link speed, 10 gigabits. So the first thing that I want to show you, if we'll talk about an NFS data store, NFS is not a block level data store like iSCSI is, it's a file level uh, protocol. So the virtual machine is actually browsable inside your NAS right here. There's a risk to it because you need to take care of this data. But since it's right here, browsable on your uh, uh, Synology NAS, you can now back it up, snapshot it, replicate it. It's as easy as, uh, for example, opening Hyper Backup, just configure your destination configure your shared folder, retention, schedule, and this will be, uh, this will take care of backing up your virtual machine. One other thing that you can do, you can go into snapshot replication and configure snapshots on the entire data store. Now, 
This will take snapshots on, of all of the virtual machines, not of the virtual machines, of the data inside this uh, shared folder, as opposed to taking snapshots of di directly of the virtual machines, uh, then theoretically, if you'll create snapshot on a snapshot, on a snapshot, on a snapshot, you'll greatly reduce uh, the performance of the virtual machine. And it's, a ross, and it's a risk because snapshots are basically files and if one of the files gets somehow corrupted, you've just destroyed the entire tree. In fact, VMware recommends that you use snapshots on the ESXi server as a temporary kind of thing and then delete snapshots no longer than 14 days. One other thing you can do if you're already here, you can create replication. If you have an ESXi server and some sort of a, a replication partner, a, a, a Synology NES, on a remote location, you can replicate the entire data store to that remote location, and if something, God forbid, happens to your main site ESXi server, since the data is already replicated, you can register and just power on the virtual machines from the ESXi server on that remote site. By the way, you can also do that if you're, you're using the iSCSI protocol, You'll just open up Send Manager, go to the or snapshots, and just create a schedule. And through the iSCSI protocol, the Send Manager will create snapshots, and uh, you will be protected if something happens to the virtual machine, uh, virtual machines stored on your iSCSI data store. You will be able to uh, use the snapshots to revert back. Now, having said all of this you are still able to use active backup for business to backup the entire virtual machine from your, from your uh, ESXi server to the uh, uh, Synology server. That's always an option. Uh, I did a video on that and I will put it, a link to it in the top right corner. But you get all these benefits of backing up, of replication, of snapshots without compromising when it comes to performance. In fact, Let's do a little contest right here. I have a virtual machine on the CSXI server that is installed on the local hard drive inside the ESXi server. That's one. I will also take a virtual machine that I have installed on the iSCSI data store that is on my 10 gig Synology NAS. Let's place them, place them side by side. That's the HDD one. That's the iSCSI one, and let's power them on and see who wins. All right, I am not going to speed this up. It's going to be a live contest. These are the exact real world performance. As you can see, the iSCSI has already started loading Windows. The HDD one is still far back. And as you can see, the iSCSI virtual machine is already responsive, it's ready to work. As you can see, not only that in regards to performance, you get a performance increase, you also, in combination with all the, uh, uh, let's say, resiliency and backing up and business continuity uh, capabil uh, capabilities of a Synology NES when it comes to virtualizations, the advantages are all in there, the disadvantages are gone. This is exactly how you can benefit from a 10 gig network and the, and the 10 gig uh, capable NES. Thank you so much for watching this video and if you liked it, please give it a like. It will really help me with the YouTube algorithm. And if you're already a Synology user, join our Synology Facebook group where you will be able to post and find answers to all your questions and maybe give answers to those in need. I will also like to give a special thanks to Synology and ASUS for providing the gear necessary to create this uh, series of videos. And as always, take care. I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.